Chapter 39. Covetousness. Paul says some surprising things we too often ignore. Thus, in Ephesians 5, 3, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, that is, spoken of as an existing problem. The covetous or envious man is placed in the same class as sexual libertines. Paul makes the same equation in Ephesians 5.5. 5. No whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. In 1 Corinthians 6.10, Paul equates the covetous man with thieves and drunkards. In fact, he tells us not to keep company with a covetous man, nor even to eat with him. 1 Corinthians 5.11 Covetousness is envy in action. Today, we do not condemn envy very often. Instead, we have created a politics and religion of envy. We approve of envy directed at the rich or successful, those who are better than we are. We use taxes to punish those whom we envy and to rob them. Modern man is trying to make covetousness into a virtue, and our advertising is directed to stirring up envy in us. The Bible, however, uniformly condemns envy and covetousness, and Paul tells us that it marks the reprobate mind. It is a form of idolatry because the covetous man says, My will be done. What I want, I must have. I deserve only the very best. Paul, however, sees covetousness as such a threat that he warns us against associating with or having dinner with anyone who is called a Christian but is marked by a covetous character. It is a threat because it poisons the heart of man and turns him against those who are his superiors. The covetous heart incites us to resentment and hatred, and makes us disturbers of the peace of the church. We become thieves of the unity and peace of the family of faith. And instead of brotherly love, we manifest envy and unrest. Covetousness is a sin. But remember, it is a sin which is most troublesome in us rather than in others.